Thank you for joining Wars of the Roses as we continue with part five, the lesson of Easter from the mystical interpretation of Easter by Max Hindell. Chapter five, the lesson of Easter. For if thou be dead with him, thou shalt also live with him. And if thou be a partaker of his sufferings, thou shalt be also of his glory. Thomas A. Kempis. When the earth reaches the vernal equinox in its annual circle dance about the sun, we have Easter. The spiritual rays sent out by the cosmic Christ each fall to replenish the smoldering vitality of the earth is about to ascend to the Father's throne. The spiritual activities of the fecundation and germination which have been carried on during the winter and spring will be followed by material growth and a ripening process during the coming summer and autumn under the influence of the indwelling earth spirit. The cycle ends at harvest home, thus the great world drama is acted and reenacted from year to year, an eternal contest between life and death, each in turn becoming victor and being vanquished as the cycles roll on. This great cyclic influx and efflux are not confined in their efforts to the earth and its flora and fauna. They exercise an equally compelling influence upon mankind. Though the great majority are unaware of what impels them to action in one direction or another, the fact remains nevertheless independent of their cognition that the same earthly vibration which beautifully adorns bird and beast in the spring is responsible for the human desire to don gay colors and brighter raiment at that season. This is also the call of the wild, which in summer drives mankind to relaxation amid rural scenes where nature spirits have wrought their magic art in field and forest. In order to recuperate from the strain of artificial conditions in congested cities, on the other hand, it is the fall of the spiritual ray from the sun in autumn which causes resumption of the mental and spiritual activities in winter. The same germative force which leavens the seed in the earth and prepares it to reproduce its kind and multiple, stirs also the human mind and fosters altruistic activities which make the world better. Did not this great wave of selfless cosmic love culminate at Christmas? Did it not vibrate peace and goodwill? There would be no holiday feeling in our breast to engender a desire to make others equally happy. The universal giving of Christmas gifts would be impossible and we should not all suffer loss. As the Christ walked day by day, hither and yon, over the hills and valleys of Judea and Galilee, teaching the multitudes, all were benefited, but he communed most with his disciples and they, of course, grew at peace each day. The bond of love became closer as time went on until one day ruthless hands took away the beloved teacher and put him to a shameful death. But though he had died after the flesh, he continued to commune with them in spirit for some time. At least, however, he ascended to higher spheres. Direct touch with him was lost and sadly these men looked into each other's faces as they asked, Is this the end? They had hoped so much, had entertained such high aspirations, and though the verdict glory was as fresh upon the sun-kissed landscape as before he went, the earth seemed cold and dreary, for grim desolation gnawed at their hearts. Thus, it is also with us who aim to walk after the spirit and to strive with the flesh. Though the analogy may not have been previously apparent, when the fall of the Christ ray commences in autumn and ushers in the season of spiritual supremacy. We sense it at once and commence to lave our souls in the blessed tide with avidity. We experience a feeling akin to that of the apostles when they walked with Christ, and as the seasons wear on, it becomes easier and easier to commune with him, face to face as it were. But in the annual course of events, Easter and the ascension of the risen Christ reign to the Father leaves us in the identical position of the apostles when their beloved teacher went away. We are desolate and sad. 
we look upon the world as a dreary waste and cannot comprehend the reason for our loss, which is as natural as the changes of ebb and blood and day and night, phases of the present age of alternating cycles. There is a danger in this attitude of mind if it is allowed to grow upon us. We are apt to cease our work in the world and become dreamers, lose our balance and excite just criticism from our fellow men. Such a course of conduct is entirely wrong, for as the earth exerts itself in material endeavor to bring forth abundantly in summer after receiving the spiritual impetus in winter, so ought we also to exert ourselves to greater purpose in the world's work, when it has been our privilege to commune with the spirit. If we do thus, we shall be more apt to excite emulation than reproach. We are wont to think of a miser as one who hoards gold, and such people are generally objects of contempt. But there are people who strive as, assiduously to acquire knowledge as the miser struggles to accumulate gold, who will stoop to any subterfuge to obtain their desire, and will as jealously guard their knowledge as the miser guards his hoard. They do not understand that by such a method they are effectively closing the door to greater wisdom. The Old Norse theology contains a parable which symbolically elucidates the matter. It held that all who died fighting on the battlefield, these strong souls who fought the good fight until the end, were carried to Valhalla to be with the gods, while those who died in bed or from disease, these souls who drifted weakly through life, went to the dismal Niflheim. The doughty warriors in Valhalla feasted daily upon the flesh of a boar, called Skrimner, which was so constituted that whenever a piece was cut from its flesh, at once grew back, so that it was never consumed no matter how much was carved. Thus it aptly symbolizes knowledge, for no matter how much of this we give to others, we always retain the original. There is thus a certain obligation to pass on what we have learned, and, to whom much is given of him, much will be required. If we hoard the spiritual blessings we have received, evil is at our door. So let us imitate the earth at this Easter time. Let us bring forth in the physical world of action the fruits of the Spirit sown in our souls during the past wintry season. So shall we be more abundantly blessed from year to year. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and comment. And if you can, please consider donating to Wars of the Rosies. Links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. Thank you so very much.